Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. Today I'm going to be going over the uncanny parallels between Super Bowl 48 and Super Bowl 51. Uh, I've been a little bit MIA here for a couple of days. I've been working on this. I also had like a paper to write, like a huge paper. And I had a bunch of statistics quizzes to taste. I just had a bunch of crap going on, so I had to get all of that taken care of. Uh, but as you know, or most of you know, I guess, um, I'm a Patriots fan, so I was extremely happy with the outcome of Super Bowl 51. But that is not what this video is about. Uh, Super Bowl 51 gives you an alternate look of the other way an early blowout can end up finishing, contrary to Super Bowl 48. I'll have some simple pictures, nothing nothing too big, uh, just, just pictures of what happened. Um, of most of the different scenarios, not all though. Um, I'll have some gameplay in the background, but it's kind of, it's, it's not very important. It'll be For Honor beta or Halo Wars 2 Blitz beta, so Overwatch, uh, just simply depending on the length of the video. Uh, so let's get into this. Let's first take a look at the kind of most non-similar stat, uh, and that's at the QBs. Russell Wilson went 18 of 25 for 206 yards and two touchdowns. Matt Ryan went 17 of 23 for 284 yards and four touchdowns or two touchdowns. And while these two are not all that similar, uh, they both had similar attempts to completions, and both threw two touchdowns. Uh, that was both for the two teams' uh, quarterbacks that got out to the big lead. You could also look at Peyton Manning and uh, Tom Brady's stats, but Peyton only attempted 49 passes, I believe, compared to Tom Brady's 63. So that's a pretty big discrepancy on attempts, so I didn't choose to pick that as one of the one of the similarities or parallels. Um, and this is just the first comparison, obviously, and it's not supposed to be anything crazy. Uh, next is just another kind of simple comparison uh, and nothing too big. Both games were on Fox and both commentated by Troy Aikman and Joe Buck. Nothing too special, um, just another kind of comparison. Uh, Dan Quinn was also part of each of the Super Bowls. Uh, Seattle's defensive coordinator in Super Bowl 48, and Atlanta's in Super Bowl 51. Once again, another stat, not too big, um, not too big of a deal, but let's get into the first kind of stat here. So next, we're going to take a look at a pair of receivers uh, that both played with Brady. Um, we're going to be looking at Wes Welker and Julian Edelman. Wes Welker finished with 84 receiving yards in Super Bowl 48. Um, and Julian Edelman, his replacement in New England, finished with 87 receiving yards. And he also had one of the greatest catches in Super Bowl history. Uh, granted, it was more luck than skill, and even Julian Edelman admits that. Uh, it was still one of the greatest catches in Super Bowl history. But Julian Edelman, Wes Welker's replacement, um, after Welker left, they finished with relatively the same receiving yards, 84 to 87. And so that is kind of the first parallel uh, that goes together real well for the Super Bowl. You know, you could look at the quarterbacks or where it was broadcasted or the commentators or the coach, Dan Quinn, being in both of them. But this is the first kind of real one is Edelman and Welker. And then obviously going to get a little bit more crazy as we go on here. So next, let's take a look at the score of the games. Uh, both games followed a similar trend, uh, starting with Atlanta with the simplest way getting to 7 to nothing off a touchdown. Uh, Seattle got to 8 to nothing with a safety 12 seconds into the first half and then kicked two field goals to make it 8 to nothing. Uh, so they each had three more touchdowns to their score. Uh, Seattle are, are going this way. I guess Seattle uh, scored the touchdown to make it 15 to nothing. Seattle made it 14 to nothing and it was 22 to nothing Seattle, 21 nothing Atlanta. And then they made it 29 to nothing uh, Seattle with the Percy Harvin return 12 seconds into the second half and 28 to 3 for the uh, Falcons over the Patriots. So they followed a similar game trend to that point. Then obviously the Seahawks continued to blow them out while the Falcons blew their lead. Uh, so next, let's take a look at the pick sixes. Uh, there was a pick six in both games and they're relatively similar. The yardage is about as far apart as they get. Um, they were both made in plus territory for the yardage. Um, Malcolm Smith took a Peyton Manning pass back 69 yards, and Robert, Robert Alford took Tom Brady's pass back 82 yards. 13-yard discrepancy is pretty big, but that's not really the craziest part of this. Uh, the crazy thing is both pick sixes came with the games having almost an identical score. 
at 15 to nothing and 14 to nothing. And both came while uh, both teams, uh, the Broncos and the Patriots, were driving down two scores late in the second quarter before the two-minute warning had happened. I believe Peyton Manning's came like at the 3.30 mark, and Brady's came at like the 2.35 mark or something like that, somewhere around there. That's close enough. Uh, they were about a minute apart, but they were both before the two-minute warning. Both teams were driving, trying to get back into the game, and they both threw horrible pick sixes. Manning's was a little more forgivable because he got hit while he was throwing it. Um, but on the play, he probably should have just ate it for a sack uh, in all reality, but he's trying to make a play down two scores. His pass is more forgivable than Brady's. Brady telegraphed his pass and threw a horrible pass right to Robert Alford. Who, if, Robert, if Brady looked and let Edelman get open, Robert Alford had bailed on his on his duty to guard Edelman. Uh, so it was just kind of it was kind of a luck play for Robert Alford. Um, both pick sixes were also relatively uncontested returns, which a lot of pick sixes are, but both of them were relatively un, uncontested. Robert Alford just had to outspeed Brady to the edge, which was easy, and Malcolm Smith had to beat a few offensive linemen. And C.J. Anderson, who's not known for a speed back, so he obviously outran him. Um, next, we're going to take a look at the fumbles uh, that also have to deal with the pick sixes a little bit. Uh, both fumbles were made in plus territory, and they're a little bit closer with yardage. Uh, Demarius Thomas fumbled the ball in the Seattle 23 when Byron Maxwell punched it out. LeGarrette Blunt fumbled the ball in the Atlanta four, or 29 where Deion Jones ripped it out. Uh, both fumbles were recovered by the players who made the pick sixes. Malcolm Smith recovered the Demarius Thomas fumble, and Robert Alford recovered the LeGarrette Blunt fumble. Uh, and both were recovered on the ground. Uh, they weren't advanced at anything. They were just fallen on by these two guys. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the record-setting receivers, or I guess I should say receiver and running back. In Super Bowl 48, Demarius Thomas set a Super Bowl record with 13 catches. He also posted 118 yards and one receiving touchdown. Uh, in Super Bowl 51, James White broke that receiving record with an almost identical receiving performance. I say receiving performance because he did have two rushing touchdowns, but we're not going to count those. We're just talking receiving here. He caught 14 balls and tallied 110 yards and one receiving touchdown. Like I said, he also added two rushing touchdowns, including the game winner, but just talking receiving, it's 13 compared to 14, 118 compared to 110, and they both had one receiving touchdowns. And just that they were both record setters is the bigger deal, is that Demarius Thomas had the 13 catches and then James White broke it with the 14. Uh, so as we know, the games ended with drastically different scores, with the Seahawks finishing off their blowout 43-8 and the Falcons blowing their lead and losing 34-28 to in the first overtime game in Super Bowl history. But up till the beginning of the third quarter, where a Percy Harvin kickoff return 12 seconds into the third, and a Tevin Coleman receiving touchdown on Atlanta's second drive of the third quarter, about four minutes in, uh, made the games 29 and 28-8-3, respectively. One game stayed the course, while another drastically changed, and New England rewrote the book on a comeback. But it just shows you that two games can appear drastically similar. If you look at the stats, you break it down, other than Brady's yards, uh, other than the two quarterbacks, Brady and Manning, um, the stats are relatively similar. There wasn't a whole lot of running game in either game. Devontae Freeman is the top rusher of the four top running backs of the two of the four games, unless you count James White being the top running back because he had two touchdowns. Uh, Devontae Freeman was the top rusher, um, with no one eclipsing 100 yards on the ground, um, but both being mostly because of relative blowouts and two special teams slash defensive touchdowns for the Seahawks in their 43 points, and the fact that Atlanta scored their 28, included a pick six, and then they didn't score again. Uh, both team stats look, or all four team stats look relatively the same if you compare game to game, Patriots to Broncos and Seahawks to Falcons. But yeah, that is kind of a cool thing that I saw. Uh, I went back and was watching game film on the Super Bowl, and one of the recommended videos was Super Bowl 48, so I was just like, okay, let me go back and take a look at it. Um, why not? I kind of like to go back and watch old Super Bowls sometimes. Just the highlights, not like the full games, but just like the highlights. 
And just from that, I gathered the comparisons that I saw here. So we'll run over them one more time, uh, just quickly. So we had the quarterbacks with the relatively similar uh, completions and attempts, and their yards were kind of far apart, but they were both in the 200s, and they both threw two touchdowns. Like I said, it was nothing crazy. It was just supposed to be the leadoff. Uh, next was the comparison of the the games being both on Fox, Fox and being by Joe Aikman, or <laughs> Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. Let me not combine their names. Uh, and then Dan Quinn being a part of both Super Bowls. Next was the Welker and Edelman. Welker finished with 84 yards and Edelman finished with 87. Uh, the scores trended similarly. 7-0, 8-0, 15-0, 14-0, and 29-0, 28-3. Patriots just had to ruin it with the three. It would have been unbelievably comparable uh, if they wouldn't have had the three points there. Uh, and then we took a look at the pick sixes. Uh, Malcolm Smith and Robert Alford. Uh, the yardage wasn't close with 69 to 82, uh, but the scores lines were at uh, 15 to nothing and 14 to nothing when they came, with both quarterbacks driving their teams in to try to close the gap to a one score game before halftime. Uh, they both occurred just before the two minute warning. Like I said, Manning's about one minute and 30 seconds, and Brady's about 30 seconds. Uh, both were uncontested. Like I said, most, most pick sixes are uncontested because usually they're thrown on out routes, they're thrown on tip passes. Usually you only got to beat a lineman, a couple linemen like Smith did, or you got to beat the quarterback like Alford did. Then we took a look at the fumbles of Demarius Thomas and LeGarrette Blunt. Both were forced by the defense. They were, they weren't like, you know, sometimes when a guy is just getting tackled and he just drops the ball. Sometimes there aren't forced fumbles. There's kind of like screwed up fumbles or like on a handoff or, you know, different stuff like that. Someone will juggle the ball um, after they've caught it, trying to switch hands. And fall. They're, they're, you know, some of those unforced fumbles. They were both forced fumbles. Byron Maxwell punched it out, and Deion Jones ripped it out. Um, and then both Super Bowl pick six um, players recovered the fumble, Malcolm Smith recovering Thomas's and Alford recovering Blunt's. Uh, and then we looked at the Super Bowl records, uh, rec record-setting receivers, uh, with Demarius Thomas setting the Super Bowl record with 13 catches uh, while posting 118 yards and one touchdown. Uh, James White broke that receiving record uh, with a similar receiving performance. He caught 14 balls, topping Thomas by one. He tallied 110 yards and one receiving touchdown. Obviously, he added the two rushing touchdowns, but in this comparison, we're going to omit that kind of, and we're just looking at the receiving. Uh, but guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't. Um, let me know if you guys had put any of these together yourselves or if I showed you something new today. Uh, I put a lot of effort into this video. Um, getting kind of the, the, the pictures were easy, but I mean like getting all the stuff together and then editing them in and making sure... Uh, they were edited in at the right time and all that different stuff. So I'd appreciate a like if you guys could. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace out.